Hi, this is Neil. I thought I was done this series and uh, I'm doing a, a go over this morning uh, reviewing. I went right back to, uh, well, what was it, 191, I think it was, and listened to all of them. I was just trying to make sure I got all my loose ends tied up and was thinking maybe I'd make another one to tie loose ends up, the loose ends of the loose ends, you might say. And anyway, uh, What's happening in this world, as you're well aware, the, the, the world is changing day by day now, not month by month or year by year. Like every day there's surprising news. They're closing. I'm here in Canada and we're kind of quite a ways down the, the line from this coronavirus starting over in China there. And it's really did a lot of damage in in uh, Italy and now it's really running hot in uh, Europe and all kinds of places and and uh, we it seems to me we've got all these knee-jerk knee reactions but anyway uh, everybody's running scared they've yesterday they closed their borders closed international flights uh, our schools are all closed like for the year not just for a few weeks uh, no more public meetings uh, I got a call from a friend. They closed their business. She's a she's a barber. She cuts hair. Close the doors. No more haircuts. <laughs> We're all going to be hippies. <laughs> um, anyway, and the grocery stores are just nuts. Still no toilet paper anywhere. <laughs> I don't know where all that toilet paper is going, but somebody's well prepared. Anyway, uh, you know. Let's get serious here. I'm thinking I need to make another, uh, I'm hoping, hoping I can keep this short. It seems like I'm a, a long-winded guy, but uh, I'm gonna entitle it The Coronavirus, How Not to Get Dead. And I might do the words a little bit different, but uh, my granddaughter came up with this. I think she was probably five, four or five. A few, it was a few years ago already. She's seven now, but she, they were, I think it was winter time, and they were driving down the street at night, and they, they saw a rabbit, and the rabbit's hopping around, and and she made the comment that that rabbit is is just trying to trying to not get dead, and uh, you know trying to get out of the way, and uh, so I'm building this idea around this. Uh, I've just watched all these episodes and. I'm going to put it in my description, but encourage you to, to start where I did. Start uh, with the one I did on the coronavirus. And I think it's 191. I don't have any of my stuff here handy, but uh, I just gave some very simple things to, to follow to not get dead. And uh, God's ways are, are actually very, very simple. Like, uh, you look around you and what people are doing they're rushing off and getting toilet paper and hand sanitizer and uh, and uh, masks you know mouth masks and uh, whatever food they can uh, get a hold of and uh, you know I guess there's other things people are doing or oh, I went to the bank to get a little extra cash because that's one of the things that you know it's wise to have some extra cash in any kind of emergency and we'd, we'd been doing this for years so I just thought you know I should get a bit more and anyway the the bank and th these are local people in our little bank in town like they're scared like they're on the front line they're the ones being exposed to everybody that comes in the door and there's gonna come a day they're gonna close the bank just because of that and money is the dirtiest thing there is out there because money is the thing that touches the most hands uh, constantly. So money is the bad guy, uh, like literal money, you know, dollar bills, big dollar bills. And uh, the poor bank people, they feel like they're sacrificing themselves. I had quite a long chat with the, the, the gal at, at our bank. Like I know, you know, I've known her for quite a number of years and two of them there, known them both. And uh, you know, they're, 
going from, you know, this is crazy to being a little concerned, and now it's kind of ramped up that they're very concerned. In fact, she made the comment, I don't get paid enough to die doing this. And that is the, the fear. The coronavirus is killing people. Now, exactly how many people will end up dying from it, we don't know yet. But uh, it, it does appear that it's been uh, uh, sort of like a man-made virus. Uh, there, um, I was talking to a, a friend here a few days ago, and, and she found information and took pictures of it all. The, the coronavirus, the COVID-14 for, uh, at the time, five years ago, was being studied. And it, it was said right in this uh, report that she read and, and saw the pictures and took pictures of it on her phone. Uh, they were seeing how the human body responded to this virus. So here we are five years later and we got a COVID-19. And do you think there's any connection? No, they were fiddling with this stuff. And whether somebody purposely let it go and it's part of some hidden agenda or open agenda now, uh, very possible. But even if not, it, it got let go accidentally. And we were fiddling around with something we shouldn't have been fiddling around with. Just like our dolly the sheep. You remember way back? What, what are we doing that for? What are we fiddling around with things that uh, are out of our realm? And uh, anyway, that's the world we're in. And we're going to see more and more of it. We already got uh, artificial intelligence. Rob robots that look like real human beings. And they're smarter than us. And uh, anyway, I'm getting off on a rabbit trail here. So back to the COVID-19, back to the coronavirus. How do you not get dead? Okay, go right back to, it, I think it's 191, but go. it says the coronavirus, uh, what did I say? How, how to protect yourself from the coronavirus. Very, very simple. And it's not toilet paper and hand sanitizer and masks. That's not how you do it. You obey God. So anybody that wants to listen, okay, this is a very critical point here. The world is changing day by day. We are getting closed in. We are, we are all isolating ourselves. And we're not having any choices in what's going on. And uh, my poor wife is is in Africa right now and and uh, there's not uh, she's got her tickets to come home like they're coming home early but every day something changes and they still have a week before they get on that plane anyway I'm assuring her God's got his hand in all of this okay this is him God is doing all this he's got to have a very very specific plan this I don't need these glasses. Um, and, and it's laid out in step, step, step by step. That the reason Pat and Vilna are in, South, in Kenya is because that's the spot God has chosen to start his great work of the last day. That is where the white horse is starting. I always thought it would be Saskatchewan, and I guess in a sense it is because Pat and I, uh, this is where we've grown up and where God taught us all these things. And he, he took us out of the church system about uh, 20 years ago. We visit churches once in a while, but he trained us up to that point. He trained us in very specific spots. And he equipped us with every step. He equipped us with, with things we didn't have before and more and more and more. And, and as I explained, the more we learned, the less the church wanted us because they don't want to hear anything different than what they're taught at their particular church, you know, and they all disagree with each other and kind of fight with each other or mistrust each other. And I mean, if you're a, uh, a Catholic, you don't be going into a charismatic church, you know, that, that's not going to work. Or if you're a Lutheran, you don't want to be, you know, going into an Anglican church or, you know, you know, that kind of thing. Like, what is that? Is, are we God's family or not? Well, the thing is, we all got different doctrines, and none of them match the scriptures. And for sure, we don't accept God's definitions of sin. 
sin is the transgression of the law. Well, how can it be? Uh, if Jesus did away with the law like everybody teaches, well, it can't be that. That can't be sin. Well, it is, and we're all wrong. All the churches are wrong. And so, back to the, the virus. How are you going to survive? By keeping God's laws. His, his instructions and teachings is a better, much better translation. So, do this immediately, not tomorrow or the next or a month or you know think about I'll oh, I'll worry about God and theology a little bit later. No, do it now. Start following God's laws. I've I've given you two places to start now. Uh, do some immediate things like quit eating pigs and all the other forbidden foods. You know, and I gave you a list of them: shrimps, lobsters, crayfish. Uh, octopus. Uh, anyway, you you find those all, okay? Quit eating that stuff. That affects your health very directly. Um, you know, and we know enough to wash, but you don't need hand sanitizer to wash. Water is a, a is a perfect substance to wash with. It does the job. And don't go crazy, just wash, you know, if you're doing something grubby, wash. You know, you don't have to wash every five minutes. And uh, turn your heart to the Lord. He can look after you supernaturally. Actually, that should have been what I said first. But then the Lord will tell you, now I want you keeping my instructions. He, he's not good with us doing whatever we want. It's not just giving your heart to the Lord and then you live this wonderful life, happy, happy, happy. That's not what the journey is. The journey is you give yourself to the Lord and then the, the Lord says, now I, I would like you to do this and this and this. Like when I got talked to first by the Lord 45 years ago, he said, Neil, I want you to stop stealing because I was a thief. And I want you to stop lying because when you're a thief, you got to lie. You know, you got to cover your tracks all the time. You've got to be very creative with your lies. And uh, so I did that. I quit stealing. I quit lying. Okay, so uh, now I'm adding a whole bunch of things. So right now our health is at stake, right? Everybody's afraid. Am I going to get this virus and am I going to die when I get the virus? They're scared. First thing is get rid of the spirit of fear. When you ha are filled with the Holy Spirit, there is no room for the spirit of fear there. So if there's fear in you, uh, surround yourself with some believers. Or if you're by yourself, get down on your knees and say, Lord, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. If you do that with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your being, you will instantly be relieved of the spirit of fear. And then start doing the things that Holy Spirit inside of you urges you to do. The Holy Spirit will urge you to read the scriptures, to believe the scriptures, to fast. Fasting is your greatest weapon apart from reading the scriptures and believing God. Now, I might want to reword that some in the future, but it is a very, very powerful weapon. Start by one day fast, and we're supposed to do it once a year for sure on the Day of Atonement. That's a commandment. The, the feasts of the Lord are for his people. They're not for the Jews or the Old Testament people or whatever, you, whatever idea you come up with. They're for God's people all the time. So if you call yourself a person of the Lord, you need to keep all the appointed times. And the place you start is the Sabbath day. So I've, been, I've spent uh, this last grouping of, of, of videos. Please go back and all of them. This is your salvation. I'm, t I'm teaching you how to survive the coronavirus. God's way. The only way that's going to work. Man's way is not going to work. This thing is going to overtake the whole world. Lots of people are going to die. 
lots of people you know are going to die and lots of people right immediately around you are going to get sick and have a tough time. But if you do these things right now, you will not get this virus. I'm, <laughs> I'm guaranteeing it if you follow this program. You know, and like I said, step one is get down on your knees and give yourself completely with every part of your being to the Lord. He will look after you. This, this is the time where the Lord says, uh, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Right now is that time. So call out to the Lord, and then the things you know about that are wrong in your life, change them immediately. Repent. That's what repentance is. That's what overcoming is. These are the things the Lord has always asked us to do, to repent, to overcome, to understand what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the Torah. The Torah has about 600 teachings within it, and there's a few extras in the Book of Jubilees. And uh, just give it a quick read, and you will identify a few things that, oh, I'm doing that. <laughs> it just reminded me of this cute story. And this is my, my daughter, Rochelle, uh, her sister-in-law told her this story that her little child, I'm going to say was three, that could be a little off, but uh, she was teaching her how to pray and they were praying one night and, and uh, she said, uh, Lord, uh, uh, help us not to s sin. And her daughter says, Mom, what's, what's sin? And she replied something like this. Well, you know, it's like when we we tell you to do something, but you don't do it. And, and she got really, really serious. And she said, Mom, I do that all the time. Don't, don't tell God, okay? <laughs> anyway, it's quite hilarious. But really, that's us, right? We're, we're children. And uh, we have a vague concept that we're not supposed to sin. But the church has never ever ever told us that sin is the transgression of the law because that's first john 3 4 they will never point you to those scriptures uh, except with some lame explanation why that it doesn't mean that anymore you don't have to worry about that <laughs> you can go home and have your pork anyway uh okay 17 minutes if this is short i gotta make the 20 minute mark so if you want to not die if you're, if you're trying to just not get dead, like uh, my little granddaughter said about the, the bunny that was trying to get out of the way of the car in the middle of the night, in the middle of the winter, uh, if you're trying to not get dead, which you are, I mean, this fear is taking over the whole world. Every day, something the, the world gets closed in more around us, and it's the fear that's closing in, not the virus. You're not going to die from the virus if you follow this prescription. I guarantee it. And you don't need uh, all that stuff, the toilet paper and the hand sanitizer and the mask. You don't need that stuff. You need to obey God. And then as far as the appointed times, which nobody wants to listen, I, I just checked again. It's the only one of my videos in the last 10, 15 that nobody wants to listen to. That's... Uh, that's part of your salvation. Uh, the, the pointed times sh reveal to us how God's plan unfolds. And this is the most important part of it. The Great Tribulation is 50 years long. We're already into it, a year and a half. This is your salvation. This is how you learn how not to die, how not to get dead. And... Uh, so take these things seriously. Start keeping the appointed times with keeping the Sabbath day. I've spent a lot of time pointing out how you read the signs of the moon. Very, very simple. Uh, start with the really uh, easy points. The first Sabbath of the moon cycle is when the moon is an exact half in the sky at sunset. And uh, that was back three Sabbaths back already. I've been walking you through this for almost a month now. And then the second Sabbath is that when the full moon, when you get to watch at, at evening as the sun sets, the moon comes up simultaneously, you know, within a 20-minute window or whatever. You know, you, you get used to it. 
It's very distinctly that day. That's the second Sabbath. The third, third Sabbath is now you looking for the moon in the morning at sunrise, and it'll be a, a, an exact half in the sky at sunrise. But it's easy to find because you're, you're counting seven days at a time. There's seven day intervals. And then your last Sabbath will be when the first morning you get up and you can't see the moon at all. It's, it's gone. And if you got to see it the day before on that sixth day, if you got up an hour before sunrise and waited to see if you could see the moon coming up, and I had made a little bit of a mistake. I, I said something to the effect that it will be quite large. That, that wasn't the right words. It will be a tiny sliver, but if it's early enough before sunrise, like an hour before, it will be very distinct. And, uh, but if you get to see it in that hour, you know, and the closer it gets to sunrise, the less likely you're going to see it because they're too close to each other. They just, the bright sunshine just blots it out. But if you get to see it, you know you're going to have a two-day new moon. If you don't get to see it, you know you're going to have a one-day new moon. That's a rough explanation of the Sabbath day. So start your new walk of obedience by one, looking for the Sabbath day and don't work on it. See, that's the point. Uh, go to church on Sunday is fine. You know, that's not a sin. <laughs> and neither is it a sin to go to the synagogue on Saturday or if you're a messianic, go to the, the, your church on Saturday. That's, that's not a sin. Worshiping God is awesome. The sin is when you work on the Sabbath day. The Lord commands us not to work on the Sabbath day. So figure out when the Sabbath day is. It's really easy. I've given you all these instructions, these just like it says in the book of Jubilees, I, I gave you the set of instructions to find the Sabbath days back when you're in the desert. So here we are in the desert of YouTube, and I'm showing you the, the laws of how to find the Sabbath day. Start doing it. Okay, that's number one. And right along with number one, quitting pigs and all the other unclean uh, foods. And... Uh, uh, go back, you know, where, where I talked about the coronavirus. I tied in quite a number of, of God's uh, very, very simple instructions. Don't eat fat. Don't eat blood. Wash yourself. And uh, I, think, I think I got a wrap. Th this is very simple. And it will work. You will be spared the coronavirus if you turn your heart over to the Lord and then demonstrate it through obedience. And it, it does, it's not like you got to do it, everything instantly. Can't, can't happen. The turning of the heart is the solution. You can do that in a, in a moment with all the sincerity that's in you. You get down on your knees and say, Lord, please help me. And the Lord says, everyone who calls out on the name of the Lord will be saved.